Hello, everybody. Welcome to Virtual College Exploration for All Illinois Students, a program of the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling powered by StriveScan. To all of our participants, thanks for joining us. How do you ask questions? Please use the Q&A button. Uh, your chat is turned Camera and microphone are also off. You're muted. Your video is off. We can see your present today. Sessions offered by all sessions will be available afterwards at iacac.org. And without further ado, Belmont University. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I hope that y'all are having a good day so far. And thank you so much for joining to learn a little bit more about Belmont University. Uh, let me go ahead and row up my screen so that y'all can see that and we'll get started. All right, so again, thanks for joining uh, to learn a little bit more about Belmont University. My name is John Palmer Ray. I am Assistant Director of Admissions here at Belmont located in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I work with all students in Illinois, so I would be your main person if you ever have any questions about the university. I'm your go-to person. I'm also a Belmont graduate myself. I graduated in 2014 with my degree in political science and was also a part of the honors program. So you may hear me talk a little bit about my student experience while we are together this afternoon. Um, like you just heard, please feel free to utilize the Q&A for any questions that you may have throughout the session. I'll take a look at that specifically at the very end to answer any questions that y'all may have. But let's go ahead and get started. So here at Belmont, we are a medium-sized private co-ed Christian institution with just over 8,200 students total, about 6,800 of those being undergraduate students. Uh, here on campus over the past few years, we've been experiencing a lot of growth uh, we've actually tripled in size over the past 20 years. So there are a lot of brand new buildings. There's a lot of new all across campus, but we are still very much staying true to who we are as a student-centered university, small class sizes. So on average class size, you're gonna see about 19 students. So if you're looking for that smaller school feel where you really get to know your professors, you get to know other students, you're really gonna find that with us here at Belmont. Our student to faculty ratio is about 14 to 1. So again, a lot of engagement with your faculty members. Um, you know, we're at a size where we're small enough where you're able to have that interaction, but we're also large enough that you have uh, new faces in your classes every single semester. You're meeting new people. We have new programs, new majors. Again, it's kind of a nice mix of new as well as old on campus. So our student body itself comes from all over the country about 70% of our incoming freshman class this year was from outside of the state of Tennessee. About half of our student body is from 500 miles or more away from the Nashville area. So I just bring this up to you to let you know if you're maybe one of the only people that you know that's looking at Belmont, you're not alone in that whatsoever. Of our incoming 1600 students this past year, those students came from 1100 different high schools. And here on the screen, you can see specifically where those students were coming from. You'll notice Illinois is one of our largest states that we pull students from. It is our largest state that we get incoming freshman students from outside of the state of Tennessee. Uh, this past year, we had about 125 students from the state of Illinois. Uh, for those of y'all joining in from the Chicago area specifically, about 100 of those are from the Chicago area. Uh, depending where you're at in Illinois will, of course, change how far you are from Nashville. If you're joining from the southern part of Illinois, we may just be two or three hours away from you. If you're joining in from the Chicago area, maybe about eight or nine hours. If you're from the Chicago area, there are direct flights to us here in Nashville, of course, out of O'Hare and Midway all the time, as well as those of y'all that are a little bit closer to the St. Louis area if you're coming in from southern Illinois. Um, personally, I'm uh, my spent my high school years in deep southern Illinois, just right around the Carbondale area. So definitely familiar with those of y'all that are from southern Illinois. So here on the screen, you're going to see a picture of our campus. Um, I always like to just give you kind of a little bit of an idea of what our campus itself looks like, because that's one of the best things about Belmont. You're in the middle of a city. 
but at the same time, we have a very distinct campus community. So you don't really feel like you're in a city whenever you're on our campus. You'll notice that we don't have any big city streets running through our campus whatsoever. So it's easy to get around. You kind of feel like you're in kind of your own little bubble whenever you're on our campus. It takes you about 12, 15 minutes max to get from one corner of campus to the other. So super easy for you to get around and kind of manage your way around campus. The way that we have built campus is that all of our freshman residence halls are right smack dab in the middle. And then all of your academic buildings and student support services are located on the perimeter of campus. This is obviously a bird's eye view. Uh, just to orient yourself within Nashville, we're in the heart of the city. From where this picture was taken, downtown would be to your back. We're about two miles south of downtown, just to kind of give you a frame of reference. Of course, here's a picture of our beautiful downtown skyline. We love being here in Nashville because it's such a fun city for you to live in, but also because there are so many career opportunities available to you by being in a city like Nashville. Uh, we really want to make sure that you are taking advantage of all of those different opportunities by being a student here in Nashville from a uh, internship perspective. About three quarters of our students have at least one internship over the span of their four years. Uh, very common for students to have multiple internships. What's great about Nashville is that we've become a lot more than just music. We're a hub for healthcare, education, government, business, all of these other areas. So regardless of what you're thinking about studying, we wanna make sure that you are getting plugged in with some type of tangible experience off campus to supplement the learning that you're doing on campus. Just to give you a quick idea of our immediate surroundings, just west of us is a neighborhood called Hillsboro Village. This is directly between our campus and Vanderbilt's campus. Because of that, it feels kind of college towny. There are lots of college students, young professionals living in that part of town. Just north of our campus is Music Row. Music Row is the hub of all things revolving around the music industry. So that's where you're gonna find uh, record labels, performing rights organizations, anything and everything you can think of within the business side of the music industry literally is right next door to our campus. I drive up and down Music Row every single day to get to and from work. So a great location within a really, really fun city. So I'll switch over to the academic side of things just to give you an idea of what academic life looks like for us specifically here at Belmont. We have a lot that you can choose from. We have just about 100 different majors in total, as you can see, in a wide variety of different areas. I'll throw this up here real quick just so that you can see a list of all of our top majors, top 10, as far as size goes. You'll notice it's in a handful of different areas. I'll mention a little bit specifically about the music, performing arts, and music industry related programs that we offer at Belmont. You'll see our top major on campus as far as size goes would be music business. We're consistently ranked as one of the best music business programs in the country. That's because it is a business degree. It's a Bachelor of Business Administration. So you are having to take all of these businessy specific classes, whether that's finance, accounting, marketing, management, whatever that is revolving around the business world, you get that knowledge, but that's kind of your core. Around the peripheral of it will be all of your music industry or entertainment industry specific classes. So learning about copyright law, for example, that's an industry specific class that you're taking. So it's kind of a fallback degree built within itself, if you will, because it is a business degree and makes you um, just way more knowledgeable whenever you're walking into a boardroom or whatever that may be within the music industry. Some of our more uh, traditional performance-based programs would include things like our commercial music major. You can see that's the fourth largest program on campus. That's for students that want to do anything but classical music. So those students are wanting to pursue a career in rock, pop, country, all of these other areas outside of classical music specifically. Some other industry related programs would include audio engineering technology for students that see themselves being a sound engineer or sound producer, songwriting of course for the students wanting to pursue a career in songwriting as you would imagine. And so a lot within the entertainment and music industries if you will, but only about a third of our students at Belmont major in something revolving around the arts. Um, now, a third is still a lot, but I don't want you to think that that is all that we offer at Belmont because that's certainly not the case. For example, nursing is our second largest major on campus. It is a direct admit nursing program. So that means you're automatically in your freshman year. Business is huge for us. We have a top 25 program in the country for entrepreneurship, for example. 
biology, psychology, chemistry is growing a lot for us as well. There's this huge interest in pre-health and in the sciences and mathematics on campus. Personally, I was a major in the liberal arts and social sciences. I was a political science major. The liberal arts are the heart of our campus. So I just want you to be aware that whatever you're looking in majoring in at Belmont, know that regardless of if it's our largest major or our smallest major, you're gonna have the same small class sizes, that same connection to internships and real world opportunities as a student here at Belmont. Um, and most importantly, really getting con to connect with the material inside the classroom through discussion-based, again, liberal arts learning. Um, of course, I'm happy to talk with you a little bit more if you have any questions about the specifics of our majors, but I'll throw back up here a listing of all of our different academic colleges on campus and definitely take a look through all of those programs a little bit later on. So let's switch outside of talking about majors specifically and just kind of talk more broadly about your academic experience at Belmont, which hopefully will include studying abroad at some point. What's great about studying abroad at Belmont is that it is uh, open to all majors, regardless of what you study. You could study abroad. You could study abroad for as short as a month or as long as three months, six months, or 12 months. What's become one of the more popular times to study abroad is during the month of May, specifically, we offer what we call our Maymester program. So this Maymester happens for the span of about three and a half weeks, and this is a great way that you can get a study abroad experience and again, just for the month of May, and then come back to the States because you have an internship over the summer, a job over the summer, whatever that is, you're able to fit that studying abroad experience into what may be a very busy academic year or busy summer for yourself, essentially. You'll see different pictures, of course, here on the screen of all of our different uh, study abroad programs. We truly go all over the globe. It's open to all majors all across campus. So regardless of what you study, we really want you to have that opportunity to study abroad. We also have some unique programs called Belmont USA. So think of these as study away programs where you're not here on our campus, but you're still here in the States. Really, our Hallmark programs are located in New York City as well as Los Angeles. We will call these Belmont East or Belmont West. The way that these programs are set up is for the duration of a semester. You're living with other Belmont students, you're taking Belmont classes, but obviously you're not here in Nashville. You're living, breathing, working, all things New York or Los Angeles. The main purpose of your time there is to have a full-time internship for credit for the duration of that semester. So this is a great way that you can get uh, this experience in, in these specific cities, New York and LA, and have some tangible connections that should ultimately lead to a job after graduation. I personally had many friends that were a part of these Belmont East and Belmont West programs, many of which are in jobs today, and we're talking six to eight to 10 years after graduation because of the connections that they made through these programs. Uh, we've expanded it to some new locations, including Washington, D.C., Oregon, Hawaii, and a partnership with Bonnery Music Festival down the road from us in Manchester, Tennessee. So some really cool options for you, both through studying abroad and through studying away. I saw that we had a question about athletic training. We don't offer that, unfortunately, as a major. We do offer that as a minor. Usually those students would study exercise science as a major, and that's within our, our College uh, of Health Sciences on campus. So I wanted to answer that question. Let's now switch over and talk a little bit about uh, student life on campus. You know, with a student body that comes from all over the nation, 70% of our freshman class coming from out of state, it's really, really important to us that you are a part of the Belmont community overall. Uh, we are not a suitcase campus or commuter campus by any stretch of the imagination. We have a very active campus community, and we want to make sure that you are getting plugged in. We have just over 160 different student clubs and organizations that you can choose from overall. There's truly a little bit of something for everyone. Maybe you want to get involved in Greek life. We have fraternities and sororities that you can get plugged into, nationally recognized organizations that you would find at other larger colleges and universities. The biggest difference with us with Greek life is that you don't have any houses on or off campus. Um, so we think that takes away from a lot of cons of Greek life and we're able to establish it back to a little bit more of the foundations of Greek life, which is brotherhood or sisterhood, philanthropy, community, and of course the networking piece, especially after graduation. 
Other things you could do would include uh, club and intramural sports on campus. Maybe you want to dive into your academic area a little bit more. For example, I was a political science student. I got very involved in our model United Nations Club. Maybe you want to be involved in the music side of things without being a music major. You can be in ensembles and choirs and take private lessons. A great example of a student organization is on the right hand side of your screen. This is called Up Till Dawn Student Organization. It is associated with St. Jude's Children's Hospital down the road from us in Memphis, Tennessee, just about three hours away from the Nashville area. This is a fundraising student organization. They put on this huge event to celebrate at the end of their fundraising cycle, usually in January or February. Uh, we're one of the largest fundraising student organizations for St. Jude's Children's Hospital all throughout the country. And this has become a really cool way for the Belmont community to, to get together and network with each other. Another good example of community is in the bottom left-hand corner. You'll see a picture from our Fall Follies event. Think of this as like Saturday Night Live meets Belmont. So it's a really fun kind of comedy sketch show um, that is totally put on by Belmont students and a really big tradition for us that happens every single fall. We're also proud to be NCAA Division I Athletics here at Belmont. We participate in the Ohio Valley Conference. So we play against uh, schools that are usually a little bit bigger than us in the lower Midwest and in the upper South. Our largest sport on campus would be men's basketball. And all of our students love supporting our men's basketball team. We've been to the NCAA tournament, I believe six of the past 10 years. So fairly good for a school of our size. All athletic events are totally free for our students. All of our outdoor sports are played over in what's called the Rose Park Complex in a great part of town, just about a mile away from our campus. All of our indoor sports are over in the Curb Event Center Arena. That is on the south side of our campus and is also home to some special events from time to time. We'll have outside speakers and concerts that are in that space. Um, and as of the session today, we are also scheduled to host the third and final presidential debate in that space on October 22nd. Again, that's down in the Curb Event Center Arena. So that's just a really good example of the fact that there's always something happening here on campus. And we wanna make sure again, that you're not just studying, eating and sleeping every day, but that you're getting integrated and involved within the Belmont community overall. So just a little bit about student life for y'all. Let's now switch over and talk about another aspect of life at Belmont, and that's spiritual life. Now, we are a Christian institution, in case you were unaware, but I think it's so important for me to actually define what does it actually mean for us to be a Christian institution here at Belmont specifically? Because as you probably know, there are tons of different Christian schools out there, right? And they all do things a little bit differently. So again, what does this look like specifically for us here at Belmont? couple of things to keep in mind as we get started. Number one, we are interdenominational, so we're not affiliated with any specific denomination or church. We also welcome students of all different faith backgrounds as a part of our campus community every single year. Now, as we talk about faith on campus, there is one main requirement for our students, if you will. Uh, that requirement is that you take two religion courses at some point over the span of your four years. You choose from one of two different paths, Path A, you can see listed here on the screen, I unofficially refer to it as the more traditional track, so a study of the Old Testament and New Testament, for example. Path B, you have a little bit more flexibility in what these classes would look like. Your first class is called Understanding the Bible. That's more of a historical context class of the Bible. Your second class you choose from about eight to ten different courses that will rotate out from semester to semester. So there's always some new fresh classes from time to time, but there are some really popular classes you'll see every semester as well. I personally had a lot of friends that took a class called Jesus and the Gospel in Film. I took a class my senior year called Spirituality and World Religions that would fulfill this requirement. So in this class, we would discuss a different world faith for about three or four weeks inside the classroom in an academic context. And then we would go and visit their temple of worship here in Asheville and speak to people one on one. And that was an incredible experience for me to be able to be in these uh, people's place of worship, holy spaces, and have this personal connection uh, to supplement the learning that I was doing inside the classroom. So just a good example of a unique class that we offer here at Belmont that for me was one of the best classes I took as an undergraduate student. And that would work as a part of that two religion course requirement for all students all across campus. So that's the only requirement 
per se, but there are lots of ways that you can get involved as it relates to faith, but it's totally up to you to decide if you get involved, and if so, what does that look like specifically? Uh, you could get involved by going to our chapel service that happens every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the 10 o'clock hour. Maybe you want to find a church family here in Nashville. Maybe you want to get plugged into a spiritual development student organization on campus. Maybe you want to go out on a short-term uh, mission trip that happens during your fall break as well as during your spring break. The list goes on and on. There are all of these ways that you can get involved, but it's totally up to you to decide if you get involved and if so, what does that look like specifically? So I hope that provides a little bit more context of what it means for us to be a Christian institution here at Belmont. Um, I know that faith is such a personal thing. So if you have any questions about what this looks like for you exactly, please feel free to reach out to me directly either uh, by email or via phone. And we can certainly talk a little bit more about it one-on-one -on -one, offline, if you will. So we've talked a lot about life at Belmont, academic life, spiritual life, student life. So let's now switch over to becoming a Belmont Bruin and the application process. So for any seniors that are joining us this afternoon, of course, this information will be most applicable to you, but this is also helpful info for any of our juniors or underclassmen students that are joining today. I'll start off by saying that we try to simplify the admissions process as much as possible, as well as the scholarship and financial aid process. Um, but at the same time, we understand you've likely never applied to college before, so please reach out to me with any questions whatsoever. It's not a stupid question. I am always happy to help and walk through this process with you a little bit. So we'll talk admission, scholarship, financial aid. want to give you all an idea about some visits and see what questions you'll have, and we'll wrap things up this afternoon. So let's start off from the very beginning. Uh, for any seniors that are on the call this afternoon, our application is live for fall 2021. The application always goes live on August 1st of your senior year. A couple different ways you can apply, either online through your BU for you account. That is your prospective student portal. That's the account that you would use if you ever visited campus or signed up for some type of Belmont specific event. You can also apply through the common application. We have no preference whatsoever on which form you end up using. Just pick one, fill it out, send it in to us, and you're good to go. As you work through the application, you'll see that we ask you for a resume of activities as well as an essay, just so we can get to know you a little bit better. Uh, our review process is done holistically. That means that we take a look at absolutely everything before making a final admissions decision. So yes, we care about the academic side of things. We'll talk about that in a second, but we also know that doesn't tell the full story of who you are. What are you involved in? What do you do outside the classroom? What are your hobbies and your interests? What makes you you? We get that information through the resume of activities and through the essay. So take a little bit of time as you're working on those pieces of the application process itself. Um, and just know that our admissions committee is reading that so that we can know who you are to supplement and kind of uh, provide some context to your academic history, which we're going to talk about next. So you press submit on your application and we have some extra things that we need from you in order for your file to be considered complete. So let's first talk about test scores, uh, the elephant in the room, right? Uh, so we are test optional for this year. If you're unfamiliar with what that term means, it means you literally have the option to submit test scores if you would like to do so. Now, if you want to submit test scores to us, you are welcome to do that. You'll see here on the screen some averages for this past year. Average ACT was a 24 to a 30. Average SAT was an 1120 to a 1320 for this past year. Now, whenever you apply to the institution, you will indicate whether you are applying as a test optional student or whether you are submitting test scores to the university. Now, if you change your mind at any point, you can always update that. So let's say hypothetically you want to go ahead and test or, or rather apply as a test optional student but then you have an opportunity to sit for the ACT or SAT later and you want to send those scores in to us, just be in touch with me, send me an email, give me a call, let me know that you'd like to be considered with those test scores. We are happy to update your application with that information. Just be in touch and let me know and we can get that taken care of. Also want to note that we are super scoring for this year, both the ACT and SAT for admission and for scholarship purposes. Also want to mention that we are currently just test optional for this year for fall 2021 applicants. 
So any juniors or younger that may be joining today, again, we are just test optional for this year as of uh, this call. Now, of course, that may change within the future, but just wanted to let you know what that policy is as of today. Again, just test optional for, for fall 2021. So regardless of if you submit as a test optional student or submit test scores, we're going to ask for two additional things from you. Your official high school transcript, average GPA for this past year was about a 3.7, and your school counselor letter of recommendation. Now that is the only recommendation that we require for your application file to be considered complete. You are welcome to send in additional recommendations if you would like to do so, but that is not required or expected whatsoever. We just require that one from your counselor specifically. Now, if we have anyone today who is a homeschooled student in lieu of that counselor recommendation, we would just ask that we have a recommendation from anyone outside of your family. That could be a coach, spiritual mentor, outside teacher, whatever that is, really anyone that can speak to you as an individual outside of your family. Again, that's for homeschool students specifically. Now we know at this point in the process, there are a lot of moving pieces, right? So the best way for you to check on the status of your application is through that BU for you account online. Of course, be in touch with me as well. And I'm happy to take a look um, at that and, and see what may be going on with your application. So a couple things to know about our review process. And number one, we review everything holistically, like I mentioned earlier, that means that we take a look at absolutely everything before making that final admissions decision. Also, we review all of our applications on a rolling decision timeline and on a regular decision timeline. So rolling admissions means that we literally send out admissions decisions every single day and we accept applications on that rolling basis. From the time your application file is complete, you can expect to receive an admissions decision within about one to two weeks. So we will try to turn that around to you as quickly as possible. From the regular decision standpoint, if you're unfamiliar with that term, all that means is if you are admitted to Belmont, you have until May 1st to make that final decision, your offer of admission is non-binding whatsoever. So again, you have until that May 1st date, that's the national candidate reply date, a very common date that you're going to see with the majority of other colleges and universities all throughout the country. If you've decided that you're coming to Belmont, you indicate that by submitting a $250 non-refundable enrollment deposit, and that's your way of letting us know that you'll be coming to Belmont for that upcoming fall. So at that point, we send you information about housing and orientation, all of those incoming freshman student -y type of things happen at that point. Please do keep in mind you have until that May 1st date. There's no pressure on you whatsoever to submit that deposit prior to May 1. Only submit it whenever you're a thousand percent sure that you'll be attending Belmont for that upcoming year because we work off those numbers obviously to plan for enrollment for that upcoming fall housing, all of that type of stuff. So that's the admissions process. I um, also want to mention really quickly in case there is anyone that's interested in a performance based program. That can be anything within our College of Music and Performing Arts, as well as our songwriting major. If you're interested in any of these areas, there would be an audition or a portfolio that is required of you to gain entry into those programs. Once you submit your application to the university with that major listed, you will receive follow-up communication from that academic area with instructions on how to submit your portfolio or to submit your audition what to expect, what's needed in that, all of that stuff will be sent to you. So just keep a lookout on your email after you've applied. Usually that comes within about a day of your application being processed. Again, for any of those performance-based um, majors, songwriting, as well as anything within the College of Music and Performing Arts. So let's now switch over to the scholarship side of things. Uh, one really big thing for you to keep in mind is that your application for admission also serves as your application for any and all merit-based scholarships. So just by applying to the institution, you are automatically considered for anything and everything that is listed up here on the screen. So again, we're trying to save you a little bit of time and a little bit of anxiety as you're going through this process. So let's first talk about our general academic merit scholarships on the left-hand side. You'll see listed there. Uh, these range from three to $10,000. If you are applying with test scores, we would encourage you to be at or above these averages you can see listed here on the screen. That 27 ACT or 1220 SAT 
in conjunction with the 3.7 GPA. Again, if you're applying with test scores. Now, if you are applying as a test optional student, we'll still be looking for you to be at or above that 3.7 GPA, but we'll start looking at those additional components of your application. For example, we may take a look at your resume of activities to look at not only your involvement, but your leadership specifically. We also may take a look at your transcript a little bit closer, look at your cumulative GPA, as well as your core classes GPA. We may look at your curriculum. So what types of classes did you take? Of course, within the context of what is offered at your high school. So a little bit more of a holistic review for scholarship purposes for those test optional students. Again, you're automatically considered for these just by applying to the institution and you will receive notification on if you were selected for one of these top scholars or one of these scholarships specifically rather within about three weeks of receiving your admissions decision. So seniors specifically, um, just keep in mind admission and scholarship come at separate times, but pretty close to each other in the grand scheme of things overall. Now on the right hand side, two additional kind of pools of scholarships to talk about. First off, departmental scholarships. We do offer some departmental scholarships in a few different areas on campus. This would include our College of Theology and Christian Ministry, our nursing program, our Jack C. Massey College of Business, and our College of Music and Performing Arts. So if you apply directly into any of those programs, you are automatically considered for any of those departmental scholarships. This do have a December 1 deadline. We also have what we call our named scholarships. Our named scholarships are incredibly competitive awards. This would be anything above the $10,000 threshold. This could include our faculty scholar award given out at the $15,000 level. Uh, traditionally about 200 to 225 students will receive an invitation for that award. And this could also include our Archer Presidential Scholarship. Traditionally, five students are given this award every year and that's the whole kit and caboodle. It's tuition, room and board fees, absolutely everything. So again, very, very competitive awards. Typically the top 2% of our entire applicant pool will end up receiving one of these top awards to the university. These do have a December 1 deadline. So if you'd like to be considered for these top scholarships, again, no separate application to be considered. Just have everything sent into us by December 1st and you're good to go to be considered for those named scholarships. Notifications about these named scholarships will go out usually by the middle to end of January of your senior year. So again, biggest thing for you to keep in mind, you are automatically considered for anything and everything listed here on the screen just by applying to the institution. Now, kind of one last piece of the puzzle as we're talking about admission, scholarship, and financial aid would be need-based aid. We'll talk about this and then just a little bit about visits and then wrap things up. So if there are any additional questions for me, please feel free to throw those in the Q&A so that we can answer those as we wrap things up in the next couple of minutes. Let's first talk about need-based aid. This goes through the FAFSA process. If you're unfamiliar with the FAFSA, that stands for the pre-application for federal student aid. You're probably familiar with this is your way to apply for any federal aid. This is also your way to apply for any type of institutional need-based aid. So any type of need-based aid from Belmont specifically. FAFSA always goes live on October 1st of your senior year. So seniors, as of this video, you can start working on the FAFSA and submitting it to us. Here at Belmont, our priority filing date is December 1st of your senior year. So let's say hypothetically, some point within this fall semester, you apply to Belmont and you've been admitted. Fantastic. Uh, you then have your FAFSA sent in to us by December 1st. So you can expect to receive a financial aid package kind of within this timeline around the holiday season, around Christmas, New Year's. This will come to you in the mail. It will itemize out anything and everything that you've qualified for from Belmont as far as financial aid goes. So if you're wondering, when would I know that quote unquote final number, that's when you could expect to get that final number. Again, right around the holiday season, around Christmas slash New Year's. So I know it sounds like a lot, um, and I know sometimes we use jargon that you're not familiar with, of course, because you haven't gone through the application process. But again, just apply for admission, submit that application, send in the supplemental items to us, and then have your FAFSA into us, and you're good to go for any and all uh, admission, scholarship, and aid purposes. You cover all your bases with that, essentially. Um, I'll go ahead and answer another question that I saw in the chat 
talking about how AP classes are accepted. Really, really good question. We'll talk about AP and kind of dual enrollment, that whole world, if you will. Uh, with AP classes, super easy for them to transfer over to us. We have a chart online that you can access through our catalog that tells you if you took this class, received this score, this is what it equals out to at Belmont. Majority of those are going to come in as credits towards your major specifically and, and not necessarily as elective credits. For the majority of AP classes, we would need either a four or a five in order for you to receive credit um, for that class. But just take a look at that chart and that will give you the breakdown specifically by course. I uh, also want to mention in case anyone is taking or has taken dual enrollment credits, we'll get some questions about that. Again, super easy for that to transfer over to us as well. Our general rule of thumb is that those credits need to come from a regionally accredited two or four year institution and you would need to receive a grade of C or higher for those classes to transfer over to us. As long as both of those provisions are met, should come over to us just fine, super easy for that to happen. And um, again, just needs to come from a really regionally accredited two or four year institution and you receive a grade of C or higher. Now we can let you know once you get within your senior year and once you've applied specifically how those classes will transfer over to us. So really good question talking about um, kind of those AP and, and dual enrollment types of classes. One last thing that I'll mention to y'all and then we'll see if there are any other questions and wrap things up would be campus visits. Uh, we are open for campus visits here at Belmont as of this session. Uh, we have been open since kind of the middle of the summer for in-person visits. Uh, we do offer campus visits Monday through Friday as well as just a few Saturday visits as well. Uh, these are done, of course, with safety protocols in place. We have a certain capacity that we are at so that we can maintain appropriate social distancing. We do require masks on campus, as you would see with our student body. All students are wearing masks. They're social distancing for them as well. We do offer a pretty comprehensive campus visit program. You are able to, depending on whenever you're visiting with us, always attend an admissions information session led by myself or one of my colleagues here in the Office of Admissions, a campus tour with one of our student tour guides. And depending on when you visit, you could learn a little bit more about residence life with a residence life presentation and uh, talk with your academic area of interest a little bit more to learn about the curriculum, internships, job placement, all of the specifics of your major. So whenever you are ready to come for a campus visit, um, please feel free to come down and see us here in Nashville. Again, we're open for visits and doing everything the safest way possible. We're also, of course, open for virtual visits as well. We understand the world that we live in. Coming to visit us in person may not be possible or accessible for you at this moment. So we offer a pretty comprehensive way to uh, come and do uh, virtual visits with us. We offer those both with our academic areas specifically, as well as with our freshman uh, counselors. So one of these admissions information sessions, we will have some virtual open houses coming up. We call them our preview days, a couple of those coming up in November. So take a look for those as well. Saw so a couple more questions in the chat. So let's get these answered too. Uh, we do guarantee housing for students. Um, you are required to live on campus for your first two years. And at that point, you can then move off campus if you'd like to do so. Majority of our students will stay on campus for all four years. Uh, the way that campus is set up is that all of the freshman residence halls are pretty much right in the very middle of campus and then all of your academic buildings are kind of on the perimeter. Uh, let me pull up actually that shot of campus so that I can just kind of show you what I'm talking about. So if you're taking a look at this picture of campus, you'll see kind of this grove of trees on the right hand side. Just to the left of that, you'll see a handful of brick buildings. Those are the majority of our freshman residence halls. As you can see, they're all pretty much right next to each other. It makes it easy for you to get to know other people and get to know campus itself. You'll see some of these larger buildings kind of a little bit further off in the distance in the upper left -hand corner. This would be some of our uh, upperclassmen housing options, whether those are residence halls, uh, kind of traditional dorms or apartments. Um, so that's where you would live as an upperclassman student. Again, about three quarters of our students stay on campus for all four years. But of course, there's lots of housing available here in Nashville, but you are required to live on campus for this first two years. Uh, we do also allow cars on campus. You won't see many garages or like parking spaces as you look at this picture, right? Uh, because a lot of our academic buildings, when they were built, 
have blast out about three to four levels of parking garage space underneath the building. So you don't know it, but you are currently looking at hundreds of parking spaces located kind of hidden underneath a lot of these buildings. And you can certainly bring a car on campus. Um, up to the student, of course, if you want to do that, you don't need a car to get around our part of town and to get around Nashville. But if you want to, you can certainly bring that with you. I saw there was also a question about pharmacy, our pharmacy program. Yes, we do have an early assurance program. It is a six year program. So again, early assurance PharmD program. Um, whenever you apply for admission, you can just select pharmaceutical studies on your application and you will automatically be considered for the early assurance program. There is a Zoom video uh, kind of conference that you can do as a video interview for the program and certainly be in touch with any questions and I can get you connected up with the pharmacy program a little bit more, but it is a great option, of course, a great way that you can just do your first two years of undergraduate work and then go straight into that pharmacy program. Again, a six year early assurance PharmD program. So another question about total cost of attendance, total cost for us for this year is about $50,000. That's tuition, room and board fees, absolutely everything for a full year. Um, now, since we are a private institution, we don't have any in-state or out-of-state difference in cost. So same cost if you lived here in Nashville versus living up in Illinois. Again, that total cost for this year is about $50,000. That includes tuition, room and board fees, absolutely everything. So really good questions this afternoon, y'all. Um, let me go ahead and throw up. Feel free to ask any last-minute questions that you may have before we wrap things up but I'll throw back up here my contact information. Again, I'm your admissions counselor. Please feel free to be in touch with any additional questions. You can see my email address listed right down there. Um, let me know anything else that y'all can think of, and I guess that will wrap us up for this afternoon, and thanks for tuning in. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much to our participants. I heard some great questions. If you would please stick around for just a few moments and complete a quick survey, we would greatly appreciate your feedback. Please sign up for more sessions available at iacac.org. Recordings for this session and all sessions will be available. Thank you very much for participating.